The year 2022 saw one of the worst climate crises in the world. Be it the floods in Pakistan, the droughts in the Horn of Africa, or the heat wave in Europe. But as the world experienced the wrath of nature, it also led to disruptive protests by climate activists, all in a bid to create awareness regarding the lack of climate action that was taken by countries to protect our planet. Let's now take a look at some of these instances where climate activists created headlines by carrying out disruptive protests. In October, climate protesters threw mashed potatoes at the Claude Monet grain stacks painting in a German museum. The activists who belonged to the last generation group were protesting against fossil fuel extraction and after throwing the mashed potatoes, they glued their hands to the wall. While in the United Kingdom, climate activists belonging to Just Stop Oil Group smeared chocolate cake over a waxwork model of Britain's King Charles III and this was at London's Madame Tussauds Museum. The demonstrators were demanding that the government should halt all new oil and gas licenses and consents. The demands are simple. Just stop oil. It's a piece of cake. The group Just Stop Oil has also targeted various artworks across the country. Two activists from the group threw soup over Vincent van Gogh's iconic painting, Sunflowers. And this was at London's National Gallery. In addition to all these instances in Australia as well, two Extinction Rebellion activists glued their hands to a Pablo Picasso painting in Melbourne. The activists wanted to convey the connection between the consequences of climate change and human suffering. But as dramatic as these protests were, the British arm of the environmental group Extinction Rebellion has now said that it will no longer stage its infamous blockades of UK transport networks and instead will prioritise relationships over roadblocks. Although they have also said that they will instead hold a major demonstration against government policy in April where they are planning to call some 100,000 people to take over the streets of Westminster. But the decision taken by the environmental group comes as a huge shock for other groups like Just Stop Oil and Insulate Britain. They believe that disruptive protests are the only way forward to ensure and pressurize those in power so that they take decisions for the betterment of the environment. Moreover, they have doubled down on their commitment to disruptive climate civil resistance after Extinction Rebellion announced new tactics prioritizing relationships over roadblocks. And their supporters are also prepared to go to prison. But now the question which remains to be answered is, which is the correct way forward for these climate activists? Where should they indulge in talks with those in power? Or should they instead continue to carry out these disruptive protests on the streets to ensure that steps are taken to safeguard our planet? To discuss this and a lot more, we are now being joined by Louise Van Schaik from the Netherlands. She's a climate change researcher. Welcome to the broadcast, Louise. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, these uh, groups, these climate activists have gotten global attention, especially last year, for their disruptive methods of raising awareness. How will they keep the ball rolling should they decide to stop these methods? Yeah, well, first of all, we learned not all groups will stop these methods. Uh, but I think there are sufficient uh, ways to keep on uh, having, attract, uh, having attention for the climate change issue. The first thing is the extreme weather events that unfolding at a rapid pace. Uh, so that means that climate change is often in the news and climate NGOs are often asked what they think about these events. Uh, and I think they will also concentrate more on these mass movements. So these mass protests they want to organize in April. 
uh, for instance, online petitions on the internet, and they will probably also engage a little bit more in yeah, the regular advocacy and lobbying efforts. So talking to politicians, lawmakers, uh, private sector, uh, and, and other efforts to, um, uh, to work towards their aim. Their aim is, of course, to achieve a massive reduction of emissions, of greenhouse gas emissions, to stop reverse climate change. Um, and for that, they need, you know, wide societal support. And apparently they have drawn the conclusions that they don't achieve this support by these more disruptive actions. Right. That actually brings me to my next question. The year 2022 saw a lot of climate uh, protests, activists taking to the streets, the most disruptive protests seen so far. Um, there was a lot of critique as well about the damage to public property. So what could have prompted this, uh, this decision to move away from these disruptive methods? Have these protests created the right kind of climate awareness or was it just publicity? Yeah, so in the statement by Extinction Rebellion on their website, you can read, you know, that they have taken this decision to temporary yeah, for one year stop with these disruptive actions because apparently they didn't see enough result of these actions. They didn't see the mass uh, reduction in emissions that they aim for. Um, so they, that's, that's, I think, the main reason yeah, that they hope with other forms of protests that they attract wider mass movements and convince more people and more politicians and more companies to to stop emitting uh, and change, uh, let's say, um, their energy uh, uses. Right. Uh, so that's one reason. What an other reason uh, that is also mentioned is that the UK is about to uh, adopt new uh, laws, uh, the Public Order Bill, and that makes uh, these such protests, such really disruptive protests, of blocking uh, road infrastructure criminal act. Uh, so that means also more uh, protesters would be at risk of uh, being jailed, imprisoned, high fines that need to be paid by the movement. Right, so I guess just that a also final question takes there. part. Right, just a final question there. You know, these protests have mostly been led by the youth. Increasingly, there's demand for a seat at the table for young people when it comes to climate action. They, of course, are stakeholders in this process. Uh, we've seen activists like Greta Thunberg choose to not attend climate summits because they find them futile. So what then is the right way to attract awareness to this cause of climate action? I think Greta Thunberg, with her movement, has already uh, attracted so much attention and so much uh, publicity. Uh, that she in herself has already had a huge impact and also by making a statement of not going to this official uh, climate talks, uh, the situation is changing in society and in countries and that's I guess the most important. Um, and then on top of it nowadays, of course, especially here in Europe, the, the energy prices are so high and the perils of fossil fuels, of, of coal, oil and gas are becoming so apparent. That, that people are motivated by various ways, yeah? willing to reduce the dependency on Russia, seeing, let's say, the dependency on this fossil fuels and seeing also the lower prices of the alternatives of the renewables, um, that this um, transition is now ongoing. And what the climate movement tries to do is accelerate this transition and, and, and tackling, let's say, vested interests that are still blocking parts of it. Louise, thank you so much for all your insights and thanks for joining us on Weon's Climate Tracker today. Thank you.